Hello. Um, I'm now audible. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, good evening, all of you. And uh, my name is Tejas Sansati, Marketing Manager at Indica. I welcome you all to the fourth webinar of this Indica webinar series. So, uh, for all those four last four webinars and the webinar series we are conducting is based on totally on the real use cases, real life use cases, and the practical demonstration of uh, existing and newly developed functional of functionalities of ERP. So this webinar will also be the same. And uh, for past 14 years, uh, we have been implementing uh, ERP next, and during that period, we have faced multiple challenges and have developed unique solutions for uh, our clients. And today's topic is totally based on the similar line of uh, two challenges we have faced uh, during our this experience. And a uh, few months back, uh, we have got one of our clients lead from the outside of India and uh, who is a government client. And uh, the client was looking for the payroll system. Uh, and where they want to bulk process the salaries of the employees and they were looking for the license fee solution. Uh, while understanding business process, we found that the client is looking for the uh, process of 10 lakh plus payroll and 10 lakh is a very huge amount and we were a little bit scared about how this calibrate will go through. So and they were uh, doing for a fortnightly 10 process of payroll fortnightly and uh, with a complex salary structure. So uh, earlier we were not uh, confident about the celebrity of the ERPNX. So we have been working on the ERPNX for the last 14 years. So we were not sure about the celebrity of the ERPNX. And we involved Frappe and uh, discussed the situation. With the confidence of Frappe team, we decided to work on this project. Uh, the second project on the similar line, we face the bulk salary processing where the client was from the Pune itself and uh, they were into the contract manual, uh, contractual um, uh, contractual employees uh, providing for the MNCs uh, based out of across India and outside of the India as well. And uh, there was also the process, the bulk salary processing was the challenge. So we were not sure the average ERPNX will go through it or not. So we have done some uh, customization for that project and then some uh, customization and configuration for the client. And now we were on that project line. So for these implementations, uh, we have a backup support of Indicron team. Uh, we have a 80 plus team members and due to them, we have done 400 plus implementation uh, for a 70 plus countries. And our functional consult, we have a strong functional consult team, business analysts, project managers, DevOps, developers. We have a strong team. And uh, so due to them, uh, we were uh, able to implement it. And today, one of our functional consultants, Karandi, is our uh, today's speaker. Uh, he is our functional consultant and currently he is a practice certified functional consultant who is specialized in HR and salary processing. So HR and payroll, sorry. So we have, he has been involved in major projects and uh, his expertise is uh, in ERP system. So many times we rely on him for the major government projects and major projects across uh, the domain. And uh, so the current team is on call now and welcome current on this call and you can take this call ahead. Uh, so just a small reminder to all, uh, you can ask the questions in the webinar itself on the question uh, on the chat box or uh, you can wait until the uh, Q and a session. So over to you current Okay. Thank you. Thank you Tejas for such a nice welcome. A good evening to all. So I won't take much of your time. I'll just uh, directly start uh, today's session. Okay. Is my screen visible to all? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
okay so i have just prepared a small presentation for you for you all just to give give a gist about what i'll be covering in today's webinar okay so this is uh, the agenda for the day first i'll be showing you the payroll processing i won't be going into the basics of erp next payroll processing systems i'll be walking you through the unique feature that we have developed for one of our clients from the middle east the government clients and second part is the external recruitment so we have done this kind of approach for a hr consultancy firm based out of pune so we have a separate and a unique flow for them which i'll be demonstrating you today and this external recruitment can be used as a separate product in erp next itself we use standard doc types to accommodate these processes okay the next one is interrelated to the external recruitment which is the advanced performance appraisal and how it works i'll just show it, show you in a while okay so first we'll be going into the payroll processing these are some of the pointers i'll be walking you through okay so let's start from the first pointer which is the basic salary matrix okay so i'll be showing you the system now and i'll give you a gist of what this requirement was so in the middle east what happens is based on their job degree and position levels a basic salary is defined for each employee this is done to maintain parity between similar positions within employees who work in a similar position okay so in erp next how we have accommodated this is first of all i'll just lead you to the employee master okay this is the employee master screen of erp next this is one of my employees okay as you can see over here we have two fields which is position level and job degree so based on these selections his basic salary changes so every employee works on a position level and has a job degree defined to him okay if i change any of these his basic salary will change as you can see the basic salary changed so the the matrix behind this is built in the system as well i'll show you how the matrix works it has a, a graphical representation so as you can see based on these position levels and job degrees there can be multiple permutation combinations so whenever we select any position level against any job job degree there is a basic salary defined to it so based on this they define their basic salaries all their salary components all their calculations all of their payroll is dependent on the basic salary so there are multiple so coming in to the next part of our payroll processing is the conditional salary components in in india mostly we have seen that the basic salary differs for same type of employees with same designations working for the same number of years but in their case the government the basics their salary components depend on multiple factors okay i'll just employ, open the employee master quickly and walk you through and by the side i'll open the salary structure which we have built for them and we used standard salary conditions to accommodate these changes okay these are all my salary components based on the salary components we have created some salary structures okay so i'll open any one structure okay as you can see there are around 24 earning components with each of them having a formula linked to it okay same is there for the deductions also so for example i open the employee master okay on the employee master we have occupation allowances okay based on this occupation allowances we have a formula linked to it okay so i'll just quickly show you how the formula looks looks like and how erp next is capable so this is the standard way that i have used erp next to compute 
the value for occupation allowances as you can see in a single component i have given multiple conditions so basic into 20% if occupation allowances equal to lowest computer riskiness so based on these drop down selections these values will populate so whatever selection we make over here the basic based on the basic salary the occupation allowances will be calculated similar approach has been done for all the dependent components so all of these components over here are dependent on basic as you can see most of it is dependent on the basic salary so this is how the conditional salary components works it is a simple python condition i am not from a coding background or i don't know any python script this is basic conditions anyone can apply if they have basic knowledge of how if l condition if else condition works in excel okay we can also sum multiple fields or components into a single component as you can see over here we have multiple check boxes under other allowances one so we have two types of structures for them one is to show them in indi as individual components as you can see fixed allowances forces allowances all of these can be shown as a separate component the second option that we have is is to compile all of these components into a single salary component which is other allowances one i'll just show you the formula how it looks it's again a very basic excel condition that i used you can see b into 20% if forces if forces means if forces is enabled then it will compute a value of 20% plus means the summation of all these check boxes merged into a single component similar similar approach has been done to these other allowances also so coming in to to our next point which is the run time salary updates so this is a very unique and a different requirement that the client had Just let me turn off the camera okay so this is a very unique and different requirement that the client had what happens was that every month they recycle or they process the payroll at the start of the month as soon as the last month is over so there were many adjustments many changes they required every month to make into their salaries so for that what we have accommodated is we have built a run time salary slip on the employee master as you can see there are all the fields which are there in the salary slip every month these fields change and we can enter our own values also i'll also brief you about these check boxes these three are our standard check boxes which is statistical component depends on payment days is tax applicable editable and reset i'll explain you what editable and reset means so for example for a month designation allowances changed to 1 lakh rather than its original value okay now there is a change in this so you can see the color of that component also changed this means this is editable if this component is marked as editable then only the user will be able to edit this components and the same components on sub pressing of this button preview salary slips will be up updated run time on the salary slip before submission of the salary slips they had adjustments throughout the month on daily basis on multiple employees because the data set or the number of employees was around 40 to 50k per accountant so they followed a accountant structure so for each and every employee there was a accountant assigned to him who would be making salaries for them as all of these are government employees they won't be users of the system behalf of them accountants would be punching in their salary slips okay then editable means editing of those components the second part is reset so this reset does a two way function reset means so for example if designation allowances for this month was 1 lakh rupees 
if reset is enabled next month designation allowances will return back to its original value which was 144000 if reset is not enabled that means retain so if designation allowances has been changed to 1 lakh it will follow throughout until we change the amount to any other amount so for example if 1 lakh is entered in the month of september it will follow throughout if reset is not enabled this is a very unique requirement which we had with runtime updates on salary slips of these employees okay okay so the next part is bulk salary salary processing so in the system in the erp next system i tried processing salaries of around 6k 10k employees which executed smoothly but with the data set of more than 50000 employees as you can see in the system currently there are 45880 employees it was very difficult to make the payroll entries because the system would be going into timeout errors with the help of frappe team and their framework teams timely support we were able to run the payroll for 45000 k employees with a single button so i'll just show you how this works okay and what we have built so what the requirement was is as i informed that every month so if on the 30th of every month their salary processing closes on the first of every month they generate the salary slips in draft and and throughout the coming days or the coming weeks they make changes on their salary slips and submit those salary slips on the last day of the month this process is called recycling okay so every month when their salaries are approved all the adjustments are made they close those salary slips and come on the first of every month and click this recycle button okay what this recycle button does is it creates salaries in draft as you can see previous recycle is not submitted salary slip so next month's salary won't be generated in draft okay this is the first step that we had done based on this system we have given a batch processing logic for salary processing so we have given a batch size so it is 4000 a batch of 4000 employees takes around 12 to 15 minutes to process and similarly simultaneously multiple batches run as a background job i'll just show you the payroll entry screen this is my payroll entry screen as you can see there are these multiple batches that are created and each batch is a size of 4000 you can see number of employees is 4000 so system automatically breaks the payroll entry into a batch of 4000 and creates their salary slips in draft status okay so this was all for the payroll processing changes that we had done for our client okay these are all the changes starting from the basic salary matrix to the conditional salary components running time salary up updates from the employee master to the salary slips and the bulk processing of salaries so this is done on the newer version 15 and we are rigorously testing these so we can give the feedback to the erp next framework team as well so they can keep on enhancing the system okay so the next part is the external recruitment so this is a very unique flow i'll just give a gist about it so this is done for one of our clients called Aditech Consulting based out of Pune. They are a HR consultancy firm. So we used ERP Next for tracking their external recruitment processes also. As you all may be aware that this system is built for internal HR policies and internal recruitments, not for external recruitments. So what different we had done over here is i'll brief you all of this through this process okay so the process starts with a creation of job opening okay 
a job opening is created a similar way as we create for our internal requirements also we mark the position name we mark the company name the customer code the level of positions unique code we give type of opening internal or external to keep a bifurcation of these openings okay then based on some of these factors as you can see primary skills education qualifications then we create a team for that job opening who all will be working in the recruitment or sourcing the candidates against these openings so we have a multi select field over here where we can select multiple employees from our system and account manager for them and then we enter the basic details of these employees and that job opening okay then we have built a separate recommended applicants also so what the use case of this recommended applicants is that this is a hr consultancy firm so so for them to source job applicants is a very expensive affair they already have some job applicants in their own database itself sourced for some other positions at some at some point of time so we have built a proper recommended applicants tool so what this does is based on the skills the qualifications so this primary skills the education qualifications and the location of this so based on these two locations it pulls in the job applicants which are suitable for this job opening and those job applicants only who are open to work okay so this was our first step creating a job opening okay against that job opening there will be job applicants so major concern for erp software was to enter the data again and again so what we have done in this is we have built a resume parsing tool resume parsing means resume parsing means creating job applicants automatically from an pdf or word file okay so what this does is as you can see you attach your resumes over here okay who is attaching is the time stamp of these files okay then we upload these resumes and after these resumes are uploaded they are created as a job applicant in the system automatically the unique identifying factor for a job applicant is the system is their email address this primary email address so if there are any unique values or some applicants that are already in the system will be in the resume with issue over here because the files are marked as duplicate files and won't be passed in the system as the parsing is concerned we also have done one more change which is water marking of these resumes so every resume which is uploaded in the system gets water marked i'll show you one of the examples as you can see here this resume is water marked this is a applicant automatically created through the parsing tool so what this does is it fills in their name their email id their applicant name and if it finds these primary skills as you can see these primary skills are filled automatically from the parsing tool that we have created okay then once a job applicant is created it is tagged to a position then it is created as a project each job applicant is created as a project okay so this is a project created out of that job applicant you can see a unique name has been given to that job applicant project in order to identify so this is the position code this is the applicant name okay then 
a template for the external recruitment also has been applied so whenever a project is created these basic tasks are to be created so this is these are tasks specific to hr consultancy firms selection approval screening billing offer and hire so all of these tasks are predefinitely created whenever we create a project against that job applicant okay then whenever we are doing any kind of activity against that job applicant here is the task state and the task by status what these define is what type of task are we performing and against that task or under that task what is the current status of that job applicant this is used to derive proper reporting for the external recruitments and this is a major essential key for hr consulting firms that they want run time updates of what their job applicants current status is is the applicant qualified for interview slots is it not has he been rejected all the statuses have been marked so every task has different statuses so approval has a different status all of them have a separate status in order to track when all of these tasks are completed this project is completed and finally the job applicant is onboarded uh, to the client okay then it goes to the billing cycle of it this is what covers the process of external recruitment using erp next and most of the doc types we have used are standard doc types just the data is being fetched from one place to another okay then we have also made a email emailer for the client which gives multiple reports so we have hiring progress report different kinds of reports which gives that under this job opening this is the stage of this applicant total one so under which opening what is the stage of those applicants all of the calculations and these kinds of custom reports we have added in the system so this is a hiring progress report we have applicant submission to client we have interview list to client all of these reports so i'll just open another type of report so this purpose of email can be anything so this is applicant submission to client through here only we have options to create zip files of all their resumes or to send individual files so if you want individual files to be sent for all of these applicants in this table system will compile them to create a zip or will send send their files as individual pdf or doc files through the email so when we say send email what system will do it will pull all the cc names from the customer contacts we have allocated and it will send the email so this is the applicant submission to client we can select the task state the task by status what kind of information are we sending it sending to the client so these kinds of reports we have built in the system so the next one is the advanced performance appraisal system which has these attributes in it the rating scales the self appraisers the manager details and team member details this is also specific to the hr consulting firm they do not use the kra based appraisal they use a different kind of appraisal that they follow okay <coughs> so for example this is my advanced appraisal this is specific to the hr consulting firm for the external recruitments that they have done this is a rating scale we have the employee details from which data or from which date range we want to do the appraisal for the employee who is being appraised should be appraised as a recruiter as how his performance was as a recruiter or how his performance was as a account manager if as a recruiter who was his manager and what was the last date of review then there are multiple aspects of professional and business characteristics where we can give the self rating 
and the manager will also rate their skills. This is the HOD's rating and if there are any notes. After all of these basic things are covered, then there are multiple stages based on which they do the appraisal. Okay. So this is a very deeper analysis of how the appraisal has to be done based on the multiple stages of their job applicants like this approvals table. So how many applicants were sent to client, on hold applicants, qualified applicants and all of these will be rated. All of these parameters will be auto filled based on these get statistics and get team member details. So I'll just show you one of the, yeah. So this you can see as there were different tasks for approval selections, each of them have multiple attributes for comparison and have data in it. And based on that, they will be self rating themselves. Their appraiser will be rating themselves and their department head will be rating themselves. So for each and every stage they have worked upon against the job opening or the job applicants, there will be a rating. And in the end, there will be an analysis of how many team members are there, new deliverables, all of this. So it is a very deeper form of an appraisal that they do. So this is the performance, final rating, yes, no, the percentage of increment, all of these factors are con considered and then only the appraisal is complete. So these are the basic parameters that they follow. Okay. So that's all from my side. If you have any questions, you can shoot it out in the comments or you can let us know. Thank you. So any question? I don't see any questions in the chat also. Uh, you can ask questions after about such work. You can contact us at contact at the rating system where you can post your query. Uh, and you can ask the question from that email. Uh, so ERP Next is an open source software. The software is free to use. So it is not a licensed or a paid software. Okay. So I... Okay then Shreyas, I think I, we can wind off. Thank you all a lot. You have been a really great audience today. Thank you. Hoping to see you soon. There are some questions. There are some questions currently. Okay. Yeah, uh, you can open your chat now. Yeah, uh, the resume parsing tool is open source. It is from the GitHub. It is open source. Uh, we can process the salary say from 25th of the month to the 26th of next month. So can you explain your question, Jitendra, once? Yeah, suppose uh, uh, there is a payroll, uh, uh, let's say the frequency of the processing is lag. Uh, it has to be processed for the 25th of the, let's say, April. Uh, means every 25th of the April, uh, it has to be processed. Uh, so the salary, let's say, the starts from 25th of the month to the next of the 26th of the month. It is not like April 30 days. Uh, it is from 25th to 26th. So how that can be processed? Okay, so in that case, what we have to do is the attendance is necessary for marking the 
uh, payroll in all. So there are two options. We have two options in the HR setting, either to ma make it on a lead level, the setting, or to make it on a attendance level. So if attendance and leads are properly marked, then we can create a payroll on the 25th and mark the attendance for the next five days as present. And again, in the next month, we go back to the 25th and do the same process again. This is the only way that we can do because okay. system only calculates it from the monthly basis. Or right. what we can do is we can mm. select custom date range in the start and end date in the payroll entry itself. So it will calculate from the 25th of the last month and the 26th of this month. So I'll just quickly glance you through what I'm saying about. Yeah. Okay. So this is the payroll frequency. We have a start date and end date over here. Okay. This should be an entire month. Okay. This you can see automatically captures the data for a month. So if I mark it as 15, it will take 40. So this Correct. is already taken care. This is one option or the second option is to mark attendance in advance. If you are processing for from first to 31st, if you have custom dates, you can use this method. Understood. Understood. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, there is one question about using custom field in the calculation. How oh, can we use any fields from custom doc types and salary component formula section? So by default, salary components are linked to the employee master. So whenever you make any custom field in the employee master, it automatically fetches the data from there and does the calculation. So I'll just quickly show you how it is auto linked because we haven't added any customizations for that. Okay, so for example, this is our basic salary field. I'll open a salary structure and show you how it is already linked to that basic salary field. So for example, as you can see, this is my basic salary formula. So automatically basic under sal underscore salary, it had fetched. What you have to use is you have to just make sure under this customized form. You use. Proper field names for that. So then it will be easier for you to link those custom fields. Also, it is just a condition that we have to write with the exact Python coded field name. OK. This name basic underscore underscore salary. I hope that answers your concern. Any more questions? So I think there are no questions and more. So we can wind up to this session. Uh, thank you all for joining the session. So if you have any queries again, so you can mail us on the contact at the uh, We will be all for you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all for joining this call. We can use this call. Thank you all. Have a nice weekend ahead.